The prophetic task of the consecrated life is brought into play by three major challenges addressed to the church herself. They're the same challenges as ever, posed in new ways, and perhaps more radically by contemporary society, at least in some parts of the world. These challenges relate directly to the evangelical counsels of chastity, poverty, and obedience, impelling the church, and consecrated persons in particular, to clarify and testify to the profound anthropological significance of the councils. The decision to follow the councils, far from involving an impoverishment of truly human values, leads instead to their transformation. The evangelical councils should not be considered as a denial of the values inherent in sexuality and the legitimate desire to possess material goods or to make decisions for oneself. Insofar as these inclinations are based on nature, they are good in themselves. Human beings, however, weakened as they are by original sin, run the risk of acting on them in a way which transgresses the moral norms. The profession of chastity, poverty, and obedience is a warning not to underestimate the wound of original sin, and while affirming the value of created goods, it relativizes them by pointing to God as the absolute good. Thus, while those who follow the evangelical counsels seek holiness for themselves, they propose, so to speak, a spiritual therapy for humanity, because they reject the idolatry of anything created, and in a certain way, they make visible the living God. The consecrated life, especially in difficult times, is a blessing for human life and for the life of the Church.